Now the extraction process is important, but we're not going to get into that. That's another whole topic. Suffice to say, we want clean extraction process so we can get the organic material out without any dirty residues, okay? So your body makes cannabinoids. Breast milk contains cannabinoids. I love talking to women in the store about cannabinoids because I ask them, have you had children? They say, yes. Do you remember when the breast milk came into the breast? Most women remember that sensation the first time. It's a unique sensation. And I say, did you know that breast milk is filled with cannabinoids? And they say, nope, didn't know that. So that's what prepares the infant for life, right? We know that when the infant consumes breast milk, it builds the immune system, prepares the infant for life. This is part of biology 101, and it influences the largest class of receptors in the human body, and they're considered what's called neuroendoimmune modulators, okay? Neuro means brain, endo from within, from inside the body. And they have great regulation and power over immune system functions. Okay, so specific CBD stimulations, what does this molecule influence? Let's start with the vagus nerve, okay? The vagus nerve, also known as the cranial nerve X, looks like this, runs from the base of the skull down the spinal column, touches on just about all those organs, down into the lower intestines, which heavily influences nausea. People that have chemotherapy or maybe MSG allergies, tend to get great relief from CBD because of its influence to this vagus nerve, okay? So the vagus nerve is a command center for many involuntary nervous system or unconscious autonomic processes. So right now we're all breathing. We're not really thinking about breathing. You're just breathing. Your body's just doing it, okay? These are autonomic processes in the body. It also controls keeping the heart rate stable and keeping it constant. It also helps to control respiration and food digestion. Okay, so that vagus nerve is covered with glutamate receptors. These glutamate receptors surround the vagus nerve and they influence a lot of things. Okay, when people have MSG allergies, they'll go to a restaurant. Do you have MSG free food? Yes. Well, MSG is disguised, so monosodium glutamate is disguised as other things now. So you could very well be consuming something at a restaurant without knowing. You get home and you have a stomach ache, you don't know why. And the bottom line is that vagus nerve potentially is just saying, I kind of want to get rid of this because it's toxic to me. You have an allergic reaction to something. Same thing with people that have radiation or chemotherapy. The reason the body wants to vomit after chemotherapy is because the material is toxic to the cells. It's trying to go after the cancer. That's the goal, but it also makes us want to throw up. The body wants to purge it because the body doesn't want it in there, okay? So cannabidiol, when we put that in the bloodstream, affects that vagus nerve, which quells the nausea. The nausea tends to go away very, very quickly, okay? So these receptors, the primary cannabinoid receptors that we've learned about are CB1 receptors, primarily located in the central and peripheral nervous system, again, brain and body. The CB2 receptor is located on white blood cells, on the tonsils, and on the spleen, okay? So very heavily, heavily concentrated in the gut. Now, CBD doesn't necessarily bind to these receptors, but it does have very powerful influences over them. We'll talk about some other molecules that bind to them in a moment. So this is a decent picture that gives you a good visual. So the CB1 receptors are light blue, very heavily concentrated in the brain, down the spinal column, in the stomach area, and around the entire body. Okay, but the CB2 receptors these are more immune system modulatory. And look how focused they are in the gastrointestinal region. But they're all over the whole body, basically. And these guys do a lot of things. These receptors are found all over those cell surfaces. Remember the slide back with all those little, little balls, so to speak, on the cells? So these receptors are found all over those receptors. And although CBD doesn't necessarily bind to it, it has major influence over them and again, CB2 is primarily dominant in the immune system. So these chemical symphonies do amazing things in the body. So anandamide, as we talked about, Dr. Raphael Meshulam, who discovered it, is responsible for making us feel good. Anandamide is a bliss molecule. But something called 2-AG, it's called 2-arachidonoglycerol, is also heavily influenced. And this is an ester that helps immune function. It's a transport. It helps to remove toxins from the body, takes it into the bloodstream, takes it out through the excretory system. 
Okay. So it carries toxins from the body. The CB2 receptor, heavily influenced by 2-AG and human milk, and controls blood regulation and sugars. So specific stimulations, anandamide, when you meditate, anandamide goes up. When you eat chocolate, anandamide goes up. There's no secret to us liking chocolate. It makes us feel good, okay? This particular neurotransmitter does the same thing. All neurotransmitters in the body break down, okay? They're used and then they break down. Now there's something called FAAH, which is referred to as fatty acid amide hydrolase. That blocks CBD, okay? It breaks down anandamide and it doesn't allow it to synthesize in the body. So when we put CBD in the body, it causes a synthesis of 2-AG and it pulls up the availability of anandamide, letting your body make more cannabinoids. So we've got this chemical process happening that allows your body to balance those chemistries. Okay, main cause of chronic illness in America, no secret, uh, inflammation, Dairy, cheese, processed meats, emulsifiers, anything with phosphates, nitrates, hormones, antibiotics are going to increase inflammation. And something called neuroinflammation is pretty much off the charts in America right now. We're getting lots and lots of neuroinflammation caused by many factors. Uh, glutamate excitoxystasy, that doesn't necessarily mean you have too much glutamate in the brain, but in the receptor that's reading it is hyperactive. Okay, so we want to settle that down. So again, I'm gonna skip over this quick because we have short on time, but these are all the major command centers of the brain, cerebral cortex, hypothalamus, hippocampus. CBD stimulates all these areas within the brain. And this is really important. I wanna get this across before we run out of time, but the microglia that exists within our brain, these little cells, get attacked by these little astrocytes. Again, remember that guy running, thinking he's being healthy running, breathing smog, gets in the body, these little astrocytes caused by many different things get in the brain and they attach themselves to the microglia in the brain. And what happens is they're not supposed to release pro-inflammatory compounds, but they do because we've got VOCs in there. We've got volatile organic compounds, cleaning products. We've got off-gassing, dishwasher pods. We put those pods in the dishwasher to clean the dishwasher, right? That chemical is now on your dishes. It's on your glasses. Now let's get a nice clean glass of water and give it to our four-year-old chemicals secreting into everything. So mold toxins, mold toxins are huge. We've got a couple of companies here, a couple of um, medical institutions that buy our CBD products because they treat people with mold toxicity and Lyme's disease. Those toxins get in the brain, very hard to get out. CBD releases those toxins from the brain, cleans it out and settles down everything in the brain. And uh, this is another whole workshop guys, 5G. Just do a quick search on Google, 5G dangers to the human body. You won't believe that 5G is fast, but very, very bad for the human body. So what we're seeing is that these inflammatory triggers cause this wheel of neuroinflammation. So we have a nerve cell that's attacked by something in the brain, and that forces the glia to release these materials that aren't very good for the body. So if we go to this one, we'll show a little bit smaller, and we'll get into some of the detail. The glutamate receptor is an ion channel protein Okay, we talked a little bit about that. And any toxin that disrupts this NMDA receptor in the brain is gonna cause neuroinflammation, okay? And so this NMDA receptor is one of three types of glutamate receptors that allows positively charged ions to flow through the cell membrane. But when we're attacked by an astrocyte in the brain, what happens is it becomes negatively charged. Now it becomes a radical and now it starts attacking the body and creating inflammation, okay? So we can get neurological inflammation in the brain that cascades down and creates inflammation throughout every cell in your body, okay? We talk fibromyalgia. What is fibromyalgia? The doctors don't know. It's acid in the body, it's toxicity building up in the body causing pain on all these surfaces throughout the body, okay? We wanna clean that out. So these toxins release cytokines to the brain and when we talk about cytokines in the brain, a lot of people may have heard this word, beta amyloid plaques, contributes to Alzheimer's, contributes to Parkinson's, contributes to dementia. CBD pulls these toxins out of the brain, allows the whole system to settle down, and these peroxynitrates, again from smog, can cause brain infections. When we supplement CBD along with a balanced nutrient intake, I'm not gonna say the word diet. Diet is a dirty word to me, it's a four-letter word. 
Diet means you're going to go on something, keto or something else, and then it's going to stimulate your body, and then you're going to go back to something else. I like to talk about balanced nutrient intake. When I was a bodybuilder for 18 years, I ate a regimented diet every single day. The same thing, eggs for breakfast, baked potatoes, chicken, rice. I didn't eat any toxins, and my body responded amazingly well. When you can be regimented, get off the cheese, get off the dairy, get off the stuff that's contributing to this inflammation in your body, your body will respond. Great, great documentary on Netflix called What the Health. Watch What the Health on Netflix. You will learn a lot about phytonutrients and what cheese and other toxin, toxic materials do in the body, okay? So helps to detoxify, and these phytonutrients are vital to healthy metabolic functions. Now, very quick, we're gonna skip over because my time is getting close. We wanna do some question and answers to give you guys time to ask me as many questions as you can. Uh, but CBD actually does affect genes. It turns up genes that make glutathione, and glutathione controls antioxidant detoxification as well as protein repair. So you eat good quality protein, you've got a good supplement of glutathione, your body's producing natural antioxidants. Protein receptors can allow your body to rebuild. Your body actually rebuilds a new liver or kidney every seven to 10 years. So you go, you have a spot on your liver or kidney, oh my God, what are they gonna do? They're gonna biopsy. Let's take a piece of that thing. Let's take a piece out, see what it is. Leave it alone, in my opinion. Get off the cheese, get off the dairy, get off the alcohol, just go natural for a while and watch what happens. The spot very well could disappear. I've seen it happen. So it turns down genes that are pro-inflammatory and it does bind to this TRPV1 receptor which is known to mediate pain, perception, and inflammation in the body, and it directly activates this 5-HT1 receptor, which is this hydroxytryptamine, which is nothing more than a serotonin receptor in the brain, which is why CBD works very well as an antidepressant or anti-anxiolytic, okay? It helps calm us down. So other neuromodulatory reactions in the brain, people that take certain prescription medications complain about brain fog. I get up in the morning, I just can't get going, I just feel lethargic, that's brain fog, okay? CBD clears that out, helps with anxiety. Also, we've got lots of people with migraines. This seems to be fairly chronic, seems to be a lot more for women. I mean, women's pharmacology is far more complex than a man's. It seems like migraines really attack women's brains a lot more than men. And something called gene transcription modification, because CBD is upregulating genes that balance the body. Okay, this NRF2 gene is a protein that regulates the expression of antioxidant proteins that protect against oxidative damage. Oxidative stress is nothing more than age. The older we get, the more oxidative stress we have. Any cells exposed to oxygen are gonna break down eventually. We wanna put nutrients in the body, balanced, not diet, balanced intake, allow the body to work in homeostasis and to always be balanced. Settles down neuroinflammation, and this alone will cascade down through the whole system. Sometimes one change in the body will literally affect everything, okay? So molecular chaperones, this is a good way to close. CBD helps remove toxins, but a lot of other things do too. There's a lot of other things you can consume. Polyphenolic acids, all right? Any plants with sulfurophane, broccoli, garlic, green tea extracts, any phenols, polyphenols like sprouts, right? And ozone, like peroxide and baking soda. We talk to people every day in the store about putting baking soda in their body. They say, what? It's in my refrigerator. It's helping to control the odor. No, 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 you put it in the body. I used to use it back in the 40s and 50s and 60s for everything. I see some people shaking their heads. Of course, my mom showed me. You got a tummy ache, take some baking soda. We all forgot about it because now there's so many products in America to consume. Baking soda is a tried and true for reducing acid in the body, helps filter the blood, helps filter the kidneys, it's an amazing uh, material. We can talk during questions and answers about how to use that. And we've known now through empirical data from many, many studies that CBD is an anti-anemic. It reduces nausea and vomiting. It's an anti-convulsant. We have people with a wide range of conditions from multiple sclerosis to different forms of dementia. We see seizure activity literally stop with the right dose of CBD. It's anti-psychotic, anti-inflammatory. It's an antioxidant and it's anti-tumor. It has the ability to be mitogenic, which means it reduces tumor growth in the body. When the body's growing tumors, it just means that 
something called angiogenesis is occurring. Too much growth to the cells, okay? Too much growth. Everything needs to be in balance and very antifungal. We've got a lot of people that come into the store, they've had or have valley fever again. It's a, it's a fungus, it gets in the lungs, very hard to get out. CBD knocks it out. We've seen people get rid of their valley fever in less than six weeks with CBD, okay? So dosing guide, no specific dose for any person. Each person is unique. Each person's dosage is unique. Doesn't matter if you're tiny or large. Doesn't matter if you're young or old. Your metabolism is going to tell you the right dose of CBD and how it responds to your body. Okay, start with a specific dose, monitor for three to five days. At the store, we give everyone a dose card explaining all this. You don't have to memorize it, but most people, we start between five or 10 milligrams a day, and then you're gonna titrate or increase your dose until your symptoms diminish. It's really that simple. It's always dose related. I've seen people get response at five or 10 milligrams. I've seen people get benefits at 30 or 40 milligrams, okay? So if your condition remains, just increase your dose a little bit. If you're getting some benefit, just increase the dose a little bit until you see that balancing effect. If you are hypersensitive, I was talking to this young lady earlier today, she's been in our store, she's purchased some deep CBD and she said, I felt kind of dizzy from it. She's hypersensitive. Perfect example of someone that's hypersensitive to the molecule. She will feel results very quickly at a low dose. So she just needs to pull back on the dosage, take a smaller dose for a longer period of time, allow those receptors to get used to it, okay? And CBD is not cheap, so you only want to use what your body needs. We have people come in the store with a prescription from a doctor saying, go get 60 milligrams of CBD from John for your IBS. And we always start them at five or 10 milligrams. We don't give them 60. Because if you take too much CBD too quick, it tends to want to flush out the gut because it has such an influence back to that vagus nerve, right? How we digest food products, all right? And lastly, these are some of the things that we've known CBD helps with. I mean, you can pretty much name it. We've seen results from it. Um, it's been pretty miraculous over the past three years to see people with conditions they suffered from for literally 20 years come in and sometimes within a week, sometimes within three weeks, those conditions are completely at bay and they feel amazing. Their life has been completely changed. So we're very proud of it and I'll open it up for questions. You see different um, strengths? Correct. Of Different potencies. Excellent question. So the bottle is typically the bottle she'll, she will have a potency on the bottle. For example, we have everything from 100 to 6,000 milligrams, but most people start around 250 or 300 milligrams in the bottle. We want to get five to 10 milligrams in the body. So what that would mean is if it's a if it's a 300 milligram bottle and one dropper is 10 milligrams. We're gonna take a quarter dropper in the morning and a quarter dropper at night. That's five milligrams a day. That's the dosage to start with. You're gonna do that for about three or four days, see how you feel. If you don't feel anything, you double the dose from quarter to half. And you continue to titrate until your symptoms diminish. Question? Is there a purification process to remove mold or fungus or Excellent question. We touched on that, but that's another whole workshop. But yes, so in my store, all I can do is speak to what I do. I keep my labs that I buy. All the material I purchase is from an ISO certified laboratory. ISO is international standards. That means that they have dust control, temperature control, and they have sanitary conditions. There's people making CBD in their garage. They're making it in their kitchen and they're selling it at swap meets and farmers markets. Be cautious where you buy it. And so the, the material can contain, um, let's just say, unnecessary byproducts, right? The extraction process, the way they extract the cannabinoids from the plant is very important. There's different methods to do that. There's inexpensive methods like anything, and then there's more expensive methods that pull all those toxins out of it. There's petroleum products that can extract it, but it leaves residuals of petroleum and benzene and other things in there. We typically wanna use a CO2 extraction or a cryogenic extraction. Yes, yeah, so good question. Purity is very important. And if you do buy CBD online, be careful where you buy it because I've personally tested over 150 different CBD products from different companies and one tested at what it said. All the others are low. It might be low by 10%, but many of them are low by 50 or 60%. Meaning if it says 1,000 milligrams on the bottle, we send it to the lab and have it tested and it comes back and says, there's 205 milligrams in the bottle. 
It's just coconut oil. So be careful where you buy. You want to see a certificate of analysis.